Let me tell you something. When we were constructing this place, there are a few people here who work with us behind the scene. I told from the engineer to the architect to all the leaders, it is against the custom of Sphere of Light Church to put people under pressure for money. Everything you see here is in hundreds of millions. Less than 5% came from this house. Fact. Less than. I said, God, I won't cry to men. Do something. I remember the day we were finishing this place to use for service. They were saying, Apostle, we need to buy. I said, relax. All the money will be sent now. Kobo. Somebody just called me. Who is not a member of this church? Are you in church, Apostle? I said, I'm in church. I want to come and see your facility. Say, welcome, welcome. I said, we want to support the facility with this $50,000. That's how we clear the things. And let me say this to you. If you keep living a life where whatever is happening in your local assembly doesn't concern you, God will have to empower another person to get the job done. Your local assembly is your spiritual family. You are not just beneficiaries of the world. You are a blessing too. Let anybody bring any videotape of me manipulating people for money. I said, ah, I run with my life. If you give me, I will even find a way not to spend it. Just for the clarity of my conscience. Are you with me here? But we must set our heart to become contrite. That we are passionate. They bring buses to bring students from school. Um, you near Abuja. Say, how much do you guys pay? How many of you even know the way things run in church? Some of us just come and just enjoy the ambience and sit. Even offering, Abuja Christians struggle to give. Fact. I'm sorry, but it's the fact. I'm also not sorry. Because there are days who bring correction. Just struggle and say, uh, oh, God has lifted you level one, level two, level three. <laughs> Some have not given offering in this church since they've joined for months, not once. They always forget. It's not the mindset of the blessing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That beyond even giving in church, you are interested in your siblings in church. Just observe that, ah, how come this person has been wearing just one shoe? And you know, there is a way to give people and you shame them. That's not the way you give. You package it nicely and just look at and say, Hey, I just got you this gift. And the person will go home. Your light has now shone before men. They will go home and glorify your father who is in heaven. And your father will in turn give you glory also. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. I was in Sokoto, I was correcting them. There was a time that northern Christians were tired. One of those days it was raining, rain was coming from the roof. I said, ah, you are in a church that is leaking and your bedroom is not and you are convenient. It's wrong. It's wrong. Listen. Abraham only saw those men passing. There was no label on their head that they were angels. But it was the culture of generosity that translated the promise into the blessing. Build the culture. Get up on your feet, everybody. Now, let me say this to you. And if you have followed me on PPC, now, you see me bring corrective teachings every now and then. And if you, if you feel Apostle has taught this thing, 
this money because you want to collect my money. Keep it in your pocket. But if you sit down here and you say, ah, there's a need for me to repent and begin to truly live a life of honor, then lift your hands to heaven and say, Father, help me to honor you more. Help me to understand the protocol of the blessing. Help me to understand the pattern of the blessing. Help me to live the life style of the blessing. That I will not, I will not be a Christian whose eyes of understanding is short. I will not be a Christian whose bowel of generosity and understanding of this core kingdom principle is short. In Jesus' name we're praying. Now, look at this. If you read the story of Cain and Abel, okay? Number one, we understood that God accepted the offering of Abel because he first accepted Abel. Okay? But if you look at the story, and I've taught this, it's a teaching, it's a series online. You see that when Abel gave, there was description. When Cain gave, it was general. If you truly honor God, whenever you appear before him, be intentional and see your giving as an art of worship. That is, be intentional. Don't give God what is left. Make room for him in your heart. Anywhere the man's treasure is, there his resources will go. Are you with me? Sorry. Now I'm teaching you intentional Christian living. If I've taught you other things and you believe God sent me, if I teach you giving, no, I'm talking to you from the Lord. Unfortunately, the Nigerian Christians deserve the predicament they have. You know why? They love things that gratify their lust. When they see messages that goes in the direction that is convenient for them, oh, he's a man of God. But you teach them to give. Yeah, I don't mind them. I trust. Now, so I come for the first time. I so so giving the man they talk. I so so giving the man. <laughs> All the things I've been teaching since, I so so giving. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, listen. Jesus said, if these ones will not praise me, God will raise stones. There will be no need for anyone to replace you. Yeah. Ah, I didn't hear that in my world. Because that which God has called you for, you will do it. You will not lose your prophetic positioning. Now, if there's anyone who is seated here who wish to have, to give, whenever there's room, but doesn't have, the Lord will open the windows of heaven for you. He will give you the fatness of the earth. The gospel will advance to your account. Now, look up everybody. And I, I tell you this simply. You know, drop the mic. One day so, we are going to stand before God, right? And it will no longer be about the kind of shoe I wore. Or the quality of suit. It will be about my stewardship. What I did with what God has given to me. It will not be about the quality of schools my children attended. But how faithful have I been in recognizing God as God? The Bible says that because they, they refused to retain him, retain him in their knowledge, it gave them over to a reprobate mind to do what is not convenient. Let's go back to being generous believers. Let me tell you something. This is what separates the Islamic world from Christianity. They are taught. They, you will see a billionaire malam who sit with six people eating from the same tree. But Christians, when they touch 100,000, they build friends. How can you win people who are ready to die? I told them, I'm going to be more frequent in the north. Because they need encouragement. They said people don't like to come here because they are afraid. I will come. November, we are in Kano. We are doing that meeting again on a larger scale. 
this Christianity. That one day so Jesus will come. And I won't take anything to heaven. Naked have I come to this world. Naked will I return. Understand what God has given you in context. You are blessed to be a blessing. If you are not a blessing, you are not blessed. Period. That's the context. So from today, what is beyond just your mouth, you will receive. And you will be able to distribute. Through your life, somebody will be existed. Um, somebody will be, sorry, through your life, somebody will know that God exists. Through your life, somebody will survive tribulations. Through your life, the gospel will advance. Many souls will be saved because you are partnering with the gospel. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you and it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear so, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily Remind yourself of God's truth and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. 
you don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.